Hi class, today we're going to be talking about two topics. First, we'll discuss the difference between the height and the slant height of a pyramid or cone. And second, we'll talk about how to use the Pythagorean theorem to find heights, slant heights, or other three-dimensional measurements. So first off, we want to look at um, the difference between height and slant height. So when you were finding the surface area of a pyramid, you were finding the area of the base and the um, lateral triangles and adding up all of those areas. For the surface area, when you find the area of a triangle, you're using the base times the height of the triangle and dividing by two to find the area of one triangle. That is called the height of the triangle. But in a pyramid, that would be the slant height because it is slanted at an angle. When you're finding the volume of a pyramid, you're using the actual height of the pyramid from the base to the top of the pyramid. And that is a different height. And if we open this up, we can see the difference. In red, you notice the height of the pyramid, the distance from the base to the very top, and it makes a right angle. The slant height you'll notice is slanted and slightly longer because it's slanted. And that blue stick is the height height of one of these triangles, which is different from the height of the pyramid itself. Okay, so these we're working with two different heights, the height and the slant height. The same thing can be said for a cone. So if we rotate this cone, you will see this blue tape, and that is the slant height. It's the distance from the edge to the very top of that cone. But the actual um, height of the cone, so this slant height is about seven inches. The actual height of the cone from bottom to top is going to go straight up and down and that's closer to six and a half. Now how do you find the height or the slant height? If you look at the height and the slant height it forms a right triangle and because we have the Pythagorean theorem we can find uh, the lengths of a right triangle as long as we know two sides. So in this case if you can know this base length, which would be half of the base of the pyramid, or for a cone, it would be the radius, and you know the height, then you can use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, in order to find the slant height. Or if you know this base and the slant height, you can work it backwards to find the height of the pyramid. It will take a little bit of effort um, to visualize how the height and the slant height relate because they're in three dimensions. It's almost as if you took a slice of the pyramid or if you slice the cone um, in order to make this right triangle, but that visualization is good practice. Next, we're going to try to think about how to use the Pythagorean theorem in other contexts. For example, here I have a box. What happens if you wanted to find the distance from the bottom corner on the left here up to this top corner on the right. That would happen in three dimensions if you imagine diagonally. So, but first let's do with a simpler problem. What about the distance from one corner to the other? In that case, you could just use the Pythagorean theorem, set up the right triangle and do a square plus b squared equals c square. Now, if you wanted from one corner to the opposite one on the other side of the box, on the bottom, that will happen in three dimensions. So we can take our um, right triangle right here and we could use that diagonal. And we can set up a new triangle like this to find the distance from a bottom corner to a top corner. You would use um, the diagonal that we found earlier and the height of this box. It might be easier if we try to split this box. So here is another recreation of that box. If we were to cut it in half and have it fold out, the slice would end up being a rectangle and we are looking from the distance from this bottom corner on the left to the top corner on the right. Um, and so we can use a right triangle in three dimensions to find the distance of that diagonal. 
but of course, you, again, you would need the height of the box and that diagonal length of the box. So you'd essentially have to do the Pythagorean theorem twice in order to get this um, diagonal in space.